Our next speaker was born and raised in Cuba, and he met Fidel and Raul Castro at Belém High School in Cuba. And he left Cuba after the communist takeover, and he went to the United States under his own, under his own will. He was not thrown out of the country, he was not supposed to leave, and he is now with the Northwest Ohio School of Communism with Dean Richards and Father Hermley. May I present Mr. Gustavo Bermudez. Good evening. It is really an honor and a privilege for me to be here tonight. I really want you to take a look again. This is a man you're talking to and you're seeing who have lost his country. After fighting what could be done and after the Bay of Pigs invasion, when there was no choice, when there was nothing else that could be done in Cuba, I still had the memory of the short wave and the friends in the U.S. And I was sure that there was something going on here that it would help again those Cuban exiles and because you must have had the knowledge that you would do something to return Cuba back to a democracy. I came back on June 30th, 1961 just to find out that Miami and the Cuban colony was in chaos. I found a good friend in Key West who connected me with Senator Smathers in Washington. That senator sent me to the new people of the CIA and FBI. The new people marked the words. I was told by their representative that the Cuban people were not necessary to relieve communism in Cuba, that the United States government would take care of that situation whenever they deemed necessary. Therefore, my action days are gone, and the only action I can take today is to speak to people like you in an effort that from our sad experiences you learn and don't let the same thing happen to your beloved and free country today. Mark my words, because they are not those that have been learned in studies, they have been learned the hard way. This country can be divided and is divided by communism into two parts, adults and youth. It's hard and it could be subject to discussion which of the two is most important. For the communism, as I know, the youth is more important. Believe me when I say that after a takeover, anyone above 30 or 35 is not considered by the communist world. The new regime utilizes youth and only youth. That the examples of the 19-year-old who took charge of the largest electrified sugar mill in Cuba, in the Camagüey province, uniting all the people of this big sugar mill together, he killed a father bull worth several thousand dollars, of which he knew no value, and is standing on top of it asked the people of the sugar mill for all the cooperation he needed because the only thing he knew about sugar was that he put it in his coffee. And this is the general manager from the communist regime of the largest sugar mill in Cuba. In our own glass plant, a young electrical worker with no background other than having assisted to the Vienna Communist Youth took over a $10 million business. A 23-year-old good Communist Party member. He had no idea what production was, 
nor what management was. But it was fair because we were told on the first few days that production was not necessary, that the first goal of the communist regime was to indoctrinate the people and maybe someday they could attend production. It is in this fashion that they spent 90% of their income and the reason why they cannot do any better in any communist country regardless what they do. But it is important also and to go back that it is the youth that they are after. 180 degrees apart from it is the countries like yours which are free. It is the adults in this country which bear the burden. Before a takeover, it is you, the only ones who can do something about it fast. Because yours is a double job. You're going to have to learn what communism is, combat it from within. Don't worry about Russia and China or Cuba. Combat what you have right here now, been brewing since 1920, and you will save the country. The second burden upon you is to re-educate the youth, which has been liberalized and educated in your schools in preparation for that takeover which I am talking about. The youth will be most helpful if they are with you. If the youth is against you, you have a core, an impossible one. I have very many times repeated and will say it again, the education of the adult masses has to be a crash program, a crash program to determine your fate now. There will be time then to educate the youth, to help you and to re-educate them on democracy, God, family, and country. I can only say to further from Cuba, you have heard here in these three days wonderful things and you have heard from wonderful leaders the truth about the situation which you are going through. I can only repeat what Father Hermley said. It is not enough to know. It is not enough to go back and say how wonderful it was here. It is imperative that each one of you teach somebody else, even if it gulps your throat while you're doing it. It is necessary that you spread what you have heard here and I hope you have been encouraged, as I was, to continue the fight against this threat back in Toledo, Ohio, when I get back there. Because regardless how much I went through, there are some times when you wonder whether people are understanding the things that you're talking to them. It is gladly that I say that in Toledo, after three and a half to four years, a very liberal of the social type area compared to Columbus or Cincinnati which are strongholds of conservatism is changing. You who are here will not have to go somewhere else as there is no somewhere else. Do as I tried and failed before I tried to get the Cubans to stay in Cuba and fight for it. A lot of weaklings didn't because they knew where they could come, over here. But you haven't got a place to go and there's no sense in turning your face. Stay and fight and I'm sure you will make over. Thank you very, very much.